would to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago. Bethsaida is the home village of the three fishermen, Peter, Andrew, and Philip, who became the disciples of Jesus. Until recently, the location of Bethsaida was believed to be on a hill, about two kilometers from the shore of the Galilee Lake. It is a famous tourist site that's been around for over 30 years. If you've been to Israel, then most likely you've been here. But this location poses a major problem. Bethsaida was a fishing village. What is it doing a mile away from the shore today? To address this problem, a few theories were brought forth. Tectonic rifting that uplifted the village, sedimentation, or that the water level of the Galilee Lake was much higher 2,000 years ago than it is today. However, these theories did not sit well with the dissenters, who suggested the real location of Bethsaida to be much closer to the lake. Unfortunately, they lacked archaeological evidence to back this theory up. Until 2017. When archaeologist Dr. Mordecai Aviam and historian Dr. Stephen Notley discovered a Roman bathhouse on the present-day shoreline. This was a significant discovery, proving that the water level 2,000 years ago was the same as it is in our time. So a good friend of ours was able to get us a permission to come and film the ongoing archaeological dig of what may be the true ancient Bethsaida. So we were just stopped by a uh, by a truck that told us to keep following them because there are mines on the left and the right side of the road and they're working on removing them. So he said just to follow them, not to steer away from the road left or right until we get to the excavation site. It's hilarious about the Mokashi. How would Ethan know that? The sign says we can't drive here, they're doing excavations, so we'll just park right here and walk. Oh, we're here at the excavation dig for Bethsaida. It's very nice to meet you, Professor Notley. Yes. Is correct? Yes. Okay, so the theory was before that there were two sites, maybe sometime third or fourth century, I heard they, you know, they, they, because the water was higher, there's this theory, and then they had to move to a newer location. What do you think about that? No, that's, that, that at Tal, not only are they farther in than three kilometers, but they're much higher. And so one of their suggestions was that the lake was much higher than it uh, than it currently is and that most people assume they actually uh, they suggested up to three four meters higher than the the current lake level uh, that causes a number of problems every known settlement around the lake Capernaum Tiberias Magdala would be underwater uh, more than that last summer uh, in this probe we actually dug down and came to a Roman bath and the the level of it was actually lower than, not only lower than the folks at Etel assumed, but the lower than everyone assumed the lake level. These are actually very good news for us, because in the recent years, a lot of people are quite worried about the dangerously low water level of the Galilee Lake. And rightfully so, because it is our main source of drinking water. And the assumption that it drops a meter and a half every century is quite worrisome. So finding out that the level hasn't changed in 2,000 years is very appeasing. We have Roman we have settlement here in the Roman period. Um, means that we're between the lake and the other site. And if you're going to talk about a fishing village, this is 
this is where you're going to assume that it's, it's located. It's, everything about it makes it the leading candidate of being uh, bedside of Julius. How do you date when you excavate those layers? How do you know which layer belongs to what? Just the pottery? Do you do carbon dating? How does it work? Don't do carbon dating. Carbon dating only works on, on materials that are alive, so pottery, things like that, you can't use. Generally, you use coins. You want to find coins that are uh, in, in situ, in place, that will date like on floors, next to walls, so you can date those, and you slowly, slowly, as you go down, you keeping records of everything. It's very interesting to find it an important in the excavation because then you can date the whole surface, the whole layer, and that's what's so important for us. We're trying to stop time. When you get a coin while digging, it's more worth than just a coin that you find or buy from somebody. Yeah. yeah. Because then you understand what time it came from, that right. layer of that right. earth, so that's yeah, a dig. Yeah. The coin for itself is important for what it was fine. What, what, it can, what can it tell us about context? Hmm. Can it date the context as it's got a year or a season uh, that we know of written on it? We we'll get it in the laboratory and it has a date and it was found right beneath the floor, sealed beneath the floor. Then it dates the construction of that floor. Mm. So this is very important. This is the best place you would imagine finding coin. Yeah, I say this is 580. So the wall couldn't have been constructed before 580 or whatever that date might be. How would you know that? Just from the size of it? or Size, material, yes, yes. It's mainly chemical procedure with some physical, very delicate under the microscope in the laboratory, the specialist to do that. And then there's another specialist to date them. Mm -hmm. uh, more than 20 years, all over Israel, I especially uh, did the biblical archaeology. This is cl classical archaeology. Mm -hmm. We call it in mean, Old Testament. Mm -hmm. We call it the Jews. We yes. call it the uh, Old Testament. Mm -hmm. I mean the Bible. You know the story of Joshua, yeah. and the prophets, mm -hmm. and so on. So I made a very big research in the Jordan Valley, mm -hmm. in the Israeli side, trying to understand the story of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Whether it's correct or just a fairy tale. Yeah. And I think it's correct. Wow. <laughs> And this is exactly why we are so interested in archaeology. All of the findings illuminate the stories written in the Bible and confirm them. No wonder the 19th century French theologian and explorer Ernest Renan called the Galilean landscape the Fifth Gospel. Look, I think that you have, especially when you talk about uh, like Christian tourism uh -huh. in the land, you, you you have the traditions that have developed uh, primarily in like the Catholic and the Orthodox churches, where oftentimes it was about remembering the site or the event, not necessarily saying that X marks the spot. It's just remembering the event or something like this. And a lot of Christian tourism, even for Protestant tours that come here, uh, still go to those sites. People want to see where does X actually, you know, happen. Um, I think this is what makes it very interesting. Yeah, because when we were reading, you know, it was like Jesus was taking the um, uh, the man and you know healing him around the side, uh, the blind man. Right. And you're reading, and the and he saw trees, a uh, uh, man walking like trees. And, you're, and in my mind, I'm trying to envision this. Where would it happen? Was right. it on a lake? Was it somewhere in the mountains? But now, when you actually read this, you can envision where it took place closer yeah. by the shore. Right. So, the, so what would the water be? Because it's kind of far right now. So the water is uh, more or less about a half a kilometer, a kilometer away. But this this ledge that you see here, that more or less is the water line. So I mean, this was a site that was right on the water. <laughs> In fact, just 20 years ago, the shoreline came all the way up here to the Bethsaida site. אנשים שחופרים מוציאים את האדמה מהאתר שלהם, זה מגיע הנה, כאן אנחנו מסננים ומחפשים גודיס. כמו מטבעות, זכוכיות, סרמיק. 
זו זכוכית, אבל זה לא אינדיקטיבי. ואת מה שמוצאים שמים פה בתוך הדלי, אחרי זה... פה אני עוד מעט אשים טג, שאנחנו נדע שזה מפה, שלא נתבלבל. ואחר כך בערב שוטפים את זה, הנה זו ידי. The feeding of the 5,000 and Luke's gospel in the plains here, it, it, it uses a term, it speaks of the wilderness or the, uh, in, in Greek it's Eremos, in Hebrew Midbar, it's not, de- sometimes our English translation is translated as desert, we don't have deserts up here. So if you read your Bible and get to the place where it says, Jesus went to a solitary, deserted place in Galilee. Imagine this shoreline and its nearby hills where there are no settlements, but only nature. Thursday, yeah. So they think they found something huge in there. He could feel the vibration from the handle. Uh, that there's a big metal piece in there. Of the repulse is very oh, it has, strong. It has vibration or something? Yeah. It has. Um, they're gonna lift up the rocks under the floor. I'm gonna find out what it is. It's exciting. Is this also? Yeah. Maybe a box of treasure. Right here. Where's the end? This needs, needs a bag. Come on, right. Hey. Hey, Daniel. That's it? They are in. <laughs> Coin? Vindication after all this work? Yes. <laughs> we, yes we have a few of these coins above the Thank you, yeah. That's an M, yeah. Coin. Yay, Tim. Money under the floor. Yes. Finally. Look, you found your See the purple here? See the edge? It's incredible.